I don't know. I'm I'm sitting here and seeing you all gathered. And uh, we can truly say we're honored to be here with you. You know, on a, on a Saturday afternoon, the desire to gather together and to hear hear uh, hear the words of the Bible. I mean, so It's a really amazing thing. Um, you know, it was asked the question, how many are leaders? And, 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 and I understand your response. Uh, if I'm a pastor, I raise my hand. But I would like to say that we all are leaders here in this room. Like we all lead people. Uh, there are single people who are really leading people into the faith. single So we're here just to learn. And, and uh, it's a continuing education. We're all learning. And, and no one really knows it all. But really thank the Lord that we have this book. And uh, when we talk about leaders, there's like a couple chapters in the Bible. In particular for pastors, and it's uh, like in 1 Timothy chapter 3. And it goes under the qualifications of a bishop. And uh, that would be like verses 1 through 7. And uh, it's an amazing when you read this and you read Titus chapter 1. And, and 2 Timothy chapter 2. You really see this word popping up all the time. Um, it is called patience. You know, like a mother needs to be patient with her children. Um, friends, friends need to be patient with friends. And, uh, and uh, pastors need to be patient. Because as Pastor Kishore said that we are all a work in progress. And I heard a message uh, three days ago. And it says that we are a work in progress. But yet yeah, we are called to do the work of God. So we are his work. But he calls us to do his work. That's kind of an amazing thing. That God entrusts us. And each one in here has been called. You have been called with a very, very specific and holy call. And another thing that keeps on coming up when you read these chapters is gentleness. You know, as pastors, as parents, we need to be gentle people. You know, and I think in my own life that I am I am so happy I am so thankful for people that were gentle to me. You know, uh, David said God's gentleness had made him great. Uh, Saul was not gentle to him. But God was gentle to him. God lovingly corrected him. And another thing that pops up about 
leaders. Leaders need to be kind. Uh, we need to be wise too. Uh, we, have, we need to be we need to be wise as a serpent and harmless as a dove. Because uh, Satan likes to go after leaders. And he likes to snare them. You know, in Psalm chapter 91, it says the snares of the fowler. Like like a snare is like a trap. And there are like different traps for pastors. And this is when I'll just address the pastoral leaders. I mean, like money is a big trap. You know, let's say, for example, a young pastor has a call. And he's preaching in the village. And prior to him being a pastor, he had a degree maybe in engineering. But then the big job offer comes to make money being an engineer. Then you have to make a big decision. And uh, you know, money can be a real snare. You know, the Bible says to buy the truth and sell it not. One, one might be able to say today. And, and it will be with you for a lifetime. And you can say this. My calling is not for sale. That my calling is not for sale. There is no amount of money, okay, that will take me on in my calling. Sometimes money can be used, okay, foreign money can be used to change your doctrine. I don't, I don't know if it's the case. But sometimes there could be a lot of resources that, that would say, I want you to start changing your doctrine. That I want you to teach, you can lose your salvation. Um, I want you to preach a prosperity gospel, not the cross. And we have to say no. I, I, I will only teach the gospel grace. And I will not that. Now there are snares. <laughs> And sometimes they may not entrap a leader. But we know people walk by sight. And so people are looking at your life. They're, they're watching. You know, maybe they're watching you how you handle situations. Like I like to be around Pastor Carl, Pastor Shabelli, Pastor uh, Pastor Schaller. Pastor Carl, Pastor Shibeli, Pastor Shaller, who worry about you, no more. Pastor Rajan, Pastor Rajan, Pastor Kishore, who worry about you. You like to be able to see how they handle things. Difficult situation. That's a learning thing. 
But, but people watch your life. And uh, you know the Bible says in 1 Thessalonians 5 22. Uh, do not give any appearance to evil. Yeah, don't, don't let people think evil of you. Well, what does that mean? Like, well, let's say for me. Uh, I will never ride in a rickshaw alone with a woman. Not, not because I would be tempted. But maybe I would be driving by a, a place in Mumbai. And a church member might see that. Oh, and they say, oh, Pastor Fred is with a woman alone. And that can cause them to stumble. So if you're a pastor, you should not counsel a woman alone. Or the, or the very, uh, you know, have it very open. Or maybe bring somebody else into the council. So give no appearance of evil because people are looking at you. And, uh, so that's like practical things. Don't, don't let the love of money take you away. So we can say, my calling is not for God. Not for sale. One might say that uh, for a young lady. My pure walk before God is not for sale. And uh, so, um, maybe you have some questions. Um, you know, we want to finish our course. And, uh, you know, finish it with joy. Um, have you seen people that started but no longer walking with God? Yeah, they, they've been taken away. Uh, maybe the snares of the devil. And let's just turn to one other portion of scripture. I think this is a really wonderful. We as leaders, we could... We could reread 1 Timothy and 2 Timothy. And but here it says, This is how a servant of the Lord um, should, number one, okay, foolish questions, um, avoid them, knowing that they cause problems. A 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 23. Uh, be always ready to get uh, to give an answer. But don't feel that you have to answer foolish questions that cause arguments. They're really of no profit. And, and verse 22 says, flee also youthful lusts. And lust is anything outside of the perfect will of God. But then it says, this, uh, verse 24, the servant of Lord must not strive. So what keeps us from striving? 
Well, grace keeps us from striving. When I give myself grace, when I give myself grace, that I'm not striving. You know, word, you know word striving? Like I have to do it. I have to do it. And then I also give other people uh, grace. I don't have to feel I have to force them to do something. Always lead people. But don't drive people. Grace draws and leads people. Grace but the law drives people. Don't, don't drive people by the law. And, uh, and, uh, but here it is, but be gentle unto all men. Be gentle to people. Be gentle when they fail. And then apt to teach. Really as leaders we need to teach. Uh, we teach with our words. But we teach with our life. And lies, the lessons that we teach with our life really stay with people. And then uh, be patient. And then it says uh, in, in meekness. Instructing people. And uh, verse 26. So they might recover themselves. Like the example that Pastor Kishore gave. That the man that had failed knew there was a place that he could come to be a love. That he could be accepted. And really the gentleness of God and the gentleness of God's man gave that individual an ability to be able to recover and now walking with God. So, yeah, there's just some thoughts. Patience, gentleness, komalta, kindness, daya, no striving, being able to teach, like calling is not for sale, and to abstain from any appearance of evil. God wants us to be wise. He wants us to be mature, uh, not to be youthful and foolish. Amen. Amen.